So for my science experiment, I want to try to calculate the speed of light using marshmallows and a microwave. What's that you say? That's crazy talk? It's not crazy talk. So the microwave generates light. And because microwaves have a specific frequency, we know the frequency of the light or heat generated by the microwave. If we can figure out the wavelength of that light, then we can calculate an estimate for the speed of the light inside the microwave, which should be the speed of light everywhere because that's a constant. Okay, so I've covered the center of the plate with mini marshmallows, and I've tried to make the spaces between the marshmallows as small as possible. So now what we're going to do is we're going to microwave the marshmallows, and we're going to try to stop the microwave right as the marshmallows start melting. This is my dog. He likes to eat marshmallows. He thinks this is a good science experiment. Okay, so my microwave is pretty gross, but that's not important. The internet says it should take about 30 seconds. We'll go ahead and put the microwave on for a minute. And we'll try to watch. It's kind of hard to see the marshmallows. So I obviously did something wrong because after only 15 seconds, my marshmallows became one solid mass that like poofed up and was gross and now they're all warm and stuck together. My husband is going to be so mad that I wasted all the marshmallows. So let's try to see if we can figure out what I did wrong. Okay, so I found out that the reason that my first plate of marshmallows turned into this mess was because I'm using mini marshmallows whereas the internet used big marshmallows so it took them longer to melt. So I microwaved these marshmallows for five seconds and then stopped and then microwaved them for five seconds again and they've started to melt in the middle. Now what we want is for them to melt in two places that are separate because as you know microwaves don't heat evenly. So let's see if we go for five more seconds. If we can get them to melt somewhere other than right in the center. So let's look at our marshmallows. Right here, we have a big gloop that have definitely started to melt, turned into like marshmallowy cream. And then over here on the edge, we have some more that have started to melt. They're all goop, goopy. So we'll take these two points as our two points where the marshmallows have started to melt. Okay, so it turns out that our two melted spots are about 10 centimeters apart. So now we get to do some math. So the speed of light is going to be equal to the frequency of that light times the wavelength of that light. In physics, we write this as c, which is the speed of light, equals nu, which is frequency, times lambda, which is wavelength. So for our calculations, the frequency is 2,450 times 10 to the 6th hertz. This number can just be found on the back of your microwave. This is a pretty common frequency for microwaves. So our wavelength is the calculation that we made, the distance between the two places that melted in our plate of marshmallows. We're using this as a wavelength because where the marshmallows melted first should be the hottest places in the microwave. And the hottest places in the microwave should correspond to the peaks of the wave generated inside the microwave. So the distance between them should be the wavelength. So for our calculations, the speed of light equals 2,450 times 10 to the 6th times 0.1, which gives us a final answer of 2.45 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So the actual accepted value for the speed of light is 2.99 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which gives us an error of around 18%. 18% seems like a pretty large error, but we did just try to calculate the speed of light using mini marshmallows and my home microwave, so I think we're doing pretty good. If we wanted to go further and try to reduce this error, the first thing that we should do is remove the spinning table inside the microwave. The whole purpose of that table is to help the microwave heat evenly, and since this experiment depends on the fact that the microwave doesn't heat evenly, we really should have taken that table out. Also, I would like to try using large marshmallows next time because maybe the fact that they melt slower gives you greater accuracy.